Hello, and welcome to the first video in the Audio Moth video series. In this video, we'll cover all of the different parts of your Audio Moth, and then figure out how to configure it. So this is an Audio Moth device. The main things to note about it is it's powered by these batteries on the back. You have your SD card, which records all of your information right here, which you can pop in and out. And then you have the switches. So what each of these switches do is you'll set it to custom when you are connecting to your companion app. You'll set it to USB off when you want the device to be off or when you are configuring it. And you won't have to worry about the default setting. You can plug your audio moth in with this micro USB port. Once your device is plugged in, you'll notice it has different blinking patterns. If you switch it to the USB slash off position, you should get a solid green light. If you get a different blinking pattern than this, for example, the red is blinking, then you may have an error. Now that we understand a little bit more about our audio moth, let's figure out how we can use it. To start off, you'll need the audio moth configuration app. You can download that from the link below. This is what it looks like when you first open the app and you have not plugged in your audio moth yet. And once you plug in your audio moth, this is what it will look like. So just to break this down a little bit, you can see the time and date that is on your audio moth, and that will be displayed at the top. And in the next text box down, you can see the device ID, the description of the firmware, the firmware version, and then the battery voltage. You don't have to worry about that so much though. The things that you can start customizing are in the next text box down. So under recording settings, you can see it says sample rate in kilohertz. Generally, you'll want to keep that at 48 because if you start going above 48, your audio files will get really large. And if you go below that, the audio quality will start to decrease. You can keep the gain on medium, and then to save battery, you can enable sleep recording, cyclic recording. And then you can set the amount of time that it sleeps for. So right now mine is set for five seconds and the duration that it will record for is 55 seconds. So for every minute, it will be sleeping for five seconds and recording for 55 of those 60 seconds. And then going on to the next tab, if you select schedule, you can set the recording period. So right now I have my recording only for one hour of the day between one and 2 a.m. UTC. You can change this recording period to whatever you want, and you can also add many different periods. For example, if you wanted many different recording periods, you'll just have to go in and enter the start recording time and end recording time for each one, and then hit add recording period. You can then select the times on the right to either remove them, or you could just select clear all periods. Down below, you'll get an estimation of how large your files are going to be and how much battery you're going to use. If we select the next tab, we can go on to advanced settings. You'll only be using the advanced settings tab if you know exactly what frequencies you want to be recording for. And then if you want to save space on your SD card, you can enable amplitude threshold recording. So that means that if you set your amplitude threshold higher, it won't record any noises that are quieter than that. And then you can select configure your audio moth. 